the casuals, God bless them, actually believe that Moses Atalma versus Johnny Fisher is a 50-50 fight. <laughs> they actually believe that. They think that these two guys are somehow close in terms of technique and ability. Well, I'm here to tell you that not only would Atalma beat Johnny Fisher, but the fight is actually a complete mismatch. I'm utterly amazed that so many people can't see that. There is no area where Johnny Fisher is superior to Moses Atalma. He's not faster than him, not even close. He's not more fluid than him. He doesn't have better footwork, doesn't have a better jab, isn't slicker than him, doesn't have better upper body movement, isn't more refined and polished, doesn't have more amateur experience. There's no evidence to suggest that he hits harder than Moses Atalma either. There is literally no area of what we've seen so far where Johnny Fisher is better than Moses Atalma. Now, of course, neither guy has proven their chin, their heart, or their stamina yet over 10 or 12 rounds. They're both in the same boat on that. But in terms of what we have seen, Itama is levels and levels above. Now, could I be wrong? Could Johnny Fisher go in there and beat Moses Atalma? Well, it's heavyweight boxing. Anything literally can happen. And every single boxing fan, boxing pundit, and boxing expert has got predictions wrong. Every single one. And I'm no different. But never mind what I think. Look at what the handlers of both fighters are saying. Look at the way the handlers of both fighters are behaving. After Johnny Fisher beat Alan Babich, Eddie Hearn came out and said that he thinks Johnny Fisher could beat Sol Dakers or David Adelaide right now, but he wants him to have two or three more fights before he puts him in with those guys. <laughs> so how much does he really believe what he's saying if he insists on two or three more fights before putting... Johnny Fisher in with Sol Dakers or Adelaide. Now contrast that with the way Itama's team have been talking and behaving after he knocked out Marius Wack. I believe he's managed by Francis Warren, Frank Warren's son, one of his sons. And in this interview, he indicated that he's willing to put Itama in with Fraser Clark next. Never mind trying to become mandatory for the British title, he's willing to put him in against Fraser Clark next. Not give him two or three more fights, next. He also mentioned the Johnny Fisher fight. He said, what a fun fight that would be, but poor old Johnny Fisher, I don't think he would take it. Now, personally, I wouldn't be shocked if Johnny Fisher himself was willing to take it, but I don't think his handlers would allow him to take it because they know better. It's just that simple. Think about it. If his handlers aren't willing to put him in against Sol Dakers or Adelaide next, and they insist on two or three more fights before doing that, what makes you think they'd put him in with Moses Atalma next, who's been looking far more impressive than Dakers or Adelaide. I think we can all agree on that. People need to stop thinking of Moses Atalma as a regular heavyweight prospect, particularly you casuals out there. This is not a guy like Johnny Fisher or even Fraser Clark or Fabio Wardley. This is not a regular schmegular heavyweight prospect. No, Moses Atalma is a prodigy. I've been saying this for quite a while. And interestingly enough, Frank Warren in this interview, right after the Marius Wack performance, used the same word, prodigy. That's what Moses Atalma is. And that's not an opinion, by the way. That's a fact. It is a fact that he's a prodigy. It's not some subjective opinion. Now, why do I say this? Well, Moses Atalma was being drafted in at 14, 15 years of age to spar world champions and other world level heavyweights. Go look it up. This is how I found out about Moses Atalma in the first place, was from Shane McGuigan talking about him. Shane McGuigan at the time was training Daniel Dubois, and Dubois at that stage was a pretty experienced fighter. We think of Dubois as being very young. He's seven years older than Moses Atalma. And so Shane McGuigan in this interview was talking about bringing Atalma, who was just a teenager at the time, 16, 17 years of age, to spar Daniel Dubois, who was in his 20s. And Shane McGuigan said he could not believe how good Moses Atalma was. He couldn't believe it. He was literally shocked at what he was seeing in his gym from this 16, 17 year old kid sparring Dubois. He couldn't believe it. And so I thought to myself, okay, I've got to check this guy out. Who's this Atalma kid? I went and watched some of his amateur fights and I could see straight away what Shane McGuigan was talking about. You do realize that it's very, very unusual for a 14, 15, 16 year old kid to be getting drafted in to professional training camps to spar world champions and top contenders. So he was being drafted into spar Lawrence Socoli when he was like 14, 15, turning up to the gym in his school uniform. Folks, world champions don't go looking for 14, 15 year old kids to spar. 
Then he sparred Anthony Joshua when he was about 16, 17. I believe he sparred Joe Joyce as well. The reason that that was happening, folks, is because this guy is a prodigy. Why else would someone so young be so in demand from these top-level professional heavyweights and cruiserweights? He's a prodigy. Any of you who box right now, imagine being drafted in by the world champions in your weight class when you're 14, 15 years of age, and you do so well that other world champions want you in their gym to spar, and other top contenders want you in there, and you're turning up to spar grown men at the top of the game in your school uniform. So all this talk about Itama fighting Johnny Fisher, let's start to be sensible here. Eddie Hearn isn't going to put Johnny Fisher anywhere near Moses Itama anytime soon. That's just not going to happen because Eddie Hearn knows what the outcome would be and it would not be in favor of his guy, Johnny Fisher. He'd be getting splattered all over the place. Now, the danger, of course, for Atalma and any prodigy is that they allow the adulation and the praise that people like me heap on them to go to their head and they start underestimating their opponents, not training properly, being defensively irresponsible, not pacing themselves correctly, and so on. Itama's biggest challenge at this stage of his career is to keep his own ego in check. Don't get it twisted. He needs to have a big ego, a massive amount of self-confidence and self-belief. He needs that, but it needs to be controlled so it doesn't start working against him. You need your ego to work for you. So those are my thoughts on Moses Atalma and all this silly talk of the Johnny Fisher fight. Maybe somewhere down the line, if Johnny Fisher keeps improving and manages to close the gap in technique between himself and Atalma, then the fight would be more realistic. But as of right now, Johnny Fisher's not even close to that level. And if I'm wrong, then Eddie Hearn will be willing to make the fight sooner rather than later. But again, Look at the way Eddie Hearn's moving. Claims that he would beat Dakers or Adelaide right now, but still wants him to have two or three more fights before he faces those guys. Contrast that with the way that Frank Warren's talking about Itama. He says he'd put Itama in against Fraser Clark tomorrow. His manager, Francis Warren, is looking at people like Justice Hooney for Itama. Dempsey McKean is another name that Francis Warren mentioned for Moses Atalma. Bear in mind, Dempsey McKean has only lost one fight, and that was to Philip Hergovich. He was stopped in the 12th round of that fight, and he had plenty of success along the way. That's who Francis Warren is willing to put Moses Atalma in with next. Now, some of you are going to say it's just rhetoric. They don't really mean it. We will find out in due course, but I expect Moses Atalma to be moved quickly. I'm expecting in his next one or two fights them to put him in there against somebody in the top 10, top 15. Yes, in his next two fights. And just lastly to the casuals, do not get the likes of Alan Babich mixed up with Marius Wack in terms of the level they've fought at. Alan Babich hasn't fought anywhere even close to the level that Marius Wack has fought at. Marius Wack went the distance with Vladimir Klitschko, took every right hand that Klitschko could dish out and didn't go down. He'd only been down once in his entire career prior to fighting Moses Atalma. Klitschko couldn't do it. Dylan White couldn't drop Marius Wack. Martin Bacoli couldn't drop him. Alexander Povetkin couldn't drop him. And most recently, Fraser Clark couldn't drop Marius Wack. Went the full 10 rounds that fight. And so while you could say that the version of Marius Wack that Itama blasted out is not the same version who went the distance with Klitschko all those years ago, and I'd agree with you, but it is the same version who went the distance with Fraser Clark who just went to a draw against Fabio Wardley, the British champion. Etama goes in there and wipes out Wack in two rounds like it was nothing. Fraser Clark never even came close to dropping Marius Wack or stopping him. So there you go. Leave me your thoughts in the comment section below.